We are often conditioned to believe that Jews, Christians, and Muslims are enemies unto one another, that we must be at war with one another, that we must constantly oppose one another, and nothing can be further from the truth. This is not true. This is a tactic that is used to divide people of faith, people of goodness, people of sincerity, people of truth. It is used to divide and destroy people of faith. And this is an ancient tactic, the original strategy of Satan to divide and conquer. The real enemy is unbelief. It's faithlessness, it's godlessness, it's that which stands in opposition to faith, to the commandments of God, to goodness, to truth, to the basic fundamental values of humanity, that which opposes revelation, the revelation of God, the prophets and messengers of God. And these can be summed up in the terms of the kufar, well, munafiqeen. Kufar meaning unbelievers, again, they who oppose faith, and the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, those who put on the dress of faith, but in reality are hypocrites. Recently, I came across an amazing video, a beautiful video of a group of traditional Orthodox Jews, I believe they're Orthodox Jews, standing against Zionism and standing for Palestinian human rights, basic human rights for the Palestinian people. It was incredible and beautiful to see, and it shows that it is not Muslims versus Jews, Jews versus Muslims, but rather what we face in the world and what we have always faced is good versus evil, truth versus falsehood, light versus darkness. In this video, and I'm going to share this with you guys, you will see traditional Orthodox believers, Jews, standing up against Zionist military, protesting against them, they who are supporting and making possible the occupation of Palestinian lands and the robbing of Palestinians of their basic human rights. Incredibly, you will see Jews calling these other Zionists, Nazis, thieves, and even Hitler. Now, this is ironic because it is the Jewish people that suffered under the tyranny of the Nazis, that suffered under the abuse of Hitler and his hatred towards their people. They who dehumanized the Jewish people. And this is the evil and the toxicity of victim consciousness, victimhood, victim pathology. Those who invest in victimhood are so invested in their story of victimhood, oppression and abuse, that they will dehumanize any who they see as their enemies, any who they see as standing against them. And as they dehumanize other people, other individuals and other groups of people, they make it possible for them to act in tyranny, oppression and abuse towards others. The truth about victimhood is that it will lead human beings to becoming the worst oppressors, the worst tyrants. It leads to tyranny, it leads to oppression, and it leads to abuse. And it leads ultimately to unbelief. Because at the end of the day, Allah is in control. And if we don't take personal responsibility for our part in any situation, if we don't first look to ourselves and seek to correct ourselves, ultimately we will blame God for what we experience and what we suffer. And so victimhood leads to unbelief. And you can see this. They tend to be often the most atheistic of people. They use religion for their identity right, and to further their agenda, but they don't actually seem to believe. Now, in this video, you're going to see Orthodox traditional Jews upholding and raising the Palestinian flag, saying that it is the flag of this region. You will see children standing up to armed military police. This is something you typically see amongst Palestinian children. But it's amazing to see young Jewish children standing up against armed military police and accusing them of oppression, tyranny, abuse. You'll also see them singing anti-Zionist songs until they are broken up. Now, I want to make it clear, nobody is saying that the Jews don't have a right to exist. Of course, the Jews have a right to exist. And they exist now in that region of the world. But what people are saying is, let's be fair. Let's be just. Let's be honest and let's be sincere. And let's not become the very evil that we claim to have escaped from and that we claim to be standing against. Now, I don't normally like to get into politics, but at this point, it's almost inevitable. Politics is infused into everything and every aspect of our lives. And everyone is pushing their own particular political agendas into every arena and sphere of human experience, endeavor, and mm. culture. And so it's impossible to not get into politics at this point. And I also want to say that our Prophet ﷺ was certainly not anti-political. He was a political leader. There is no such thing as spirituality in the absence of politics. Spirituality, faith, and religion are meant to give us enlightened, illuminated, merciful, compassionate, just political leadership, just political plans and systems. We've got to get away from this bipolar mentality of spirituality, faith, religion, and then the rest of the real world. These things have to become integrated if we are going to progress and advance and succeed as a human species. Now let's watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sind die Ferne, sind die Ferne, sind die Ferne. Was? Was? Wow, amazing and beautiful to see. It's absolutely incredible. Now here are a few takeaways that I see in this film and that I'd like to share with you guys. You can see how traditional cultures and traditional peoples keep to their values and how these values are passed on to their children. Look at how the children are taking on the values of their parents and their community, the values of their leaders in standing against military police to express those values. Now contrast that with modern, materialist, Western, individualist society and culture. Where do you see children standing up for the values of their parents, of their elders, of their leaders, of their culture, of their faith and tradition? To the contrary, they're opposed oftentimes to the values, traditions, norms, and beliefs of their families. And of course, you can see the way of faith, the way of God leads to goodness. And the way of unbelief leads to evil. Recently, incredibly, unbelievably, I saw a video of a young girl insulting her father at his own funeral. This is the fruit of this ideology. This is the fruit of this culture, this materialist, individualist, godless, faithless, secularist culture 
leads to this, the destruction of families, the destruction of goodness, the destruction of light and beauty in human beings. And we have to remember, it's important for us to remember and to realize that God, Allah Almighty, is with the humble. He is with the pious. He is with the meek. He is with the true and with the sincere. Also, we have to remember as Muslims that it is not just Muslims that will go to paradise. We don't believe this. And Allah Almighty directly contradicts that idea in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Verily, they who believe, the Jews, Christians, and Sabians, who are the monotheists, who believe in God in the last day, who do good, their reward is with their Lord. And upon them, there shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 62. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala goes on in the same surah to continue to say, Yes, whosoever submits themselves fully to God and who are people of excellence, muhsineen, people of ihsan, their reward is with their Lord, and upon them there shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. And this is verse 112 in the same surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Holy Quran. As believers, Jews, Christians, Muslims, people of faith, we must unite. We must come together against the true evil, the true darkness in this world, which is unbelief, godlessness, faithlessness. And this does not mean that our enemies are people who don't believe in a particular faith or religion, people who have not yet embraced faith or religion. This means those who actively oppose faith and religion, who actively oppose revelation, who actively oppose the commandments of God. Ideas, cultures, paradigms that oppose that which has been revealed and seek to twist and distort humanity and to destroy the human race. It's important for believers to unite. And this was the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu When he emigrated to Medina, he sought to establish a community of multi-faiths, of various faiths, a community of people of the book that could come together on the principles of goodness, truth, light, revelation, and stand against evil, stand against unbelief, stand against idol worship. We have to also remember that it is not enough. It is not sufficient to simply identify with a religion, a group, a sect to identify with any collective whatsoever. That is not sufficient. We have to embody and become the very principles of the things that we identify with. We must cultivate excellence, spiritual excellence, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these verses that I've just quoted. To truly move towards paradise, as Allah says in the Quran, we must cultivate ihsan, we must become of the muhsineen. We must cultivate spiritual excellence, as the Prophet وسلم, described, meaning to be God conscious. Our belief, our identity must be manifest in our state and in our actions. It can't just simply be a label. It can't just simply be an identity. It must be a reality. And this, of course, is the goal of the Border Point and Spiritual Excellence platform. It's to support you in making faith and religion real, in cultivating spiritual excellence, in purifying ourselves of fear, of doubt, of hypocrisy, of insincerity, and of ignorance. Brothers and sisters, now is the time. We have a world that is spiraling out of control. And if we don't have strong faith in our hearts and souls now, God help us. This is the time to dive deep, to dig deep, to cultivate faith and excellence, to connect with truth, to purify our hearts and souls and connect with the presence of our Creator, to connect with light so that that light can illuminate our vision, our sight, our hearts, and protect and save us from the, from the corruption, from the deception of the world of the Antichrist. As Muslims, we know, the Prophet ﷺ said, this day will come, that the entire world will be covered in deception, in darkness, in evil, and in corruption. That that will be the time of the Antichrist, the one-eyed demon, that one-eyed devil, that one-eyed imposter that seeks to assert itself as a god over human beings. The Prophet ﷺ also said that it is only the light of faith that can protect the believer at that point. It is only the light of faith that can show a believer truth from falsehood, darkness from light, fire from water. May Allah Almighty strengthen and purify and connect our hearts and keep us connected to His divine presence of beauty and light, truth and goodness. For more information, head on over to borderpoint.com and I look forward to seeing you over there. I'll also link to the original video that I showed here in the description below this. And lastly, do me a favor, like, share and subscribe. Hit the notification icon so that you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded and it'll help us to stay connected as well. And it really helps with the growth of the channel. It really helps when you subscribe and it lets YouTube know that this channel is producing content that is of value. May Allah Almighty bless you to your divine and eternal success. Fi amanullah 
Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.